Today I want to talk about weird translated books from Latin America. So once upon a time I took an Amtrak to Boston and in my book bag as my companion I had <laughs> Samantha Shrublin's Seven Empty Houses. I didn't really know what to expect with her. I think I've heard a little bit of her other short story collections and novelas are about but I just I didn't know what to expect. When I tell y'all <laughs> that I was thrown all the way off, there was one story that I could not shake. And as I'm wont to do when I am thought haunted by <laughs> a collection, is that I will typically go down a rabbit hole of that author's interviews. So I started watching some Sammy Schweb interviews, and there was one where she was talking about this tradition in Latin American storytelling that sort of encompasses this idea of the narrative of the unusual. And I don't think I had ever explicitly made that connection. I think I just am drawn to weird stories and I happen to have just like these random strange stories that I had picked up over the years, but I hadn't ever thought about that as like a tradition in Latin American storytelling. And I got really excited about that. I have been collecting them like little Pokemons. So <laughs> I thought that in this video I could review some of the short story collections that I have read and then also make this sort of like a reading vlog because I have some on my TBR that I want to get to soon. So yeah, we're gonna do that. <laughs> so in this interview, Samantha Shrevelin talks about her obsession with the strange, with things that sort of linger in the spaces between surrealism and realism. She talks about not exactly wanting to be of horror or of suspense. She talks about minimal tensions, which I think are so interesting and I think that's what I'm I'm most drawn to when I'm reading it. I, I like when things are a little bit off and she talks about this. She said when there's just something slight that's off, you start to squint, you start to listen a little more, you start to pay attention and I like getting close to the page and trying to figure out what's awry. There's also this beautiful part where she talks about when you don't exactly know what's happening, you can't label the thing. And when you can't label the thing, you're in a state of aperture. And I thought that was really beautiful. It's just, you're in a very open state because you're trying to figure out what's what. I can link that interview down below, it's, it's wonderful. So let's get into some weird uh, translated short story collections from Latin America. <laughs> So the first collection that I wanted to talk about was Seven Empty Houses by Samantha Shrublin. This one, the first few stories were so strange, but there's just one story. Maybe there's one story in here <laughs> that freaking haunted me. So essentially, I'm just gonna tell you about this one story. Essentially we have these siblings. We have two sisters and it's our narrator's birthday. And in order to take the attention away from our narrator, the sister drinks a cup of bleach and grown man takes her across the street and they go steal Hello Kitty panties. Yeah, just the weirdest thing. <laughs> I could not shake that story. I thought it was so eerie. I think a lot of her stories in this also sort of circle around how we inhabit spaces and how we make home of spaces. So I think there's a lot of empty space. There's a lot of trespassing, losing sight of people and not feeling home within our home. So a lot of interesting themes stuck in this and all very eerie, very strange. And again, not in like this overt sort of horror or suspense kind of way, but just like in this very quiet, something just an inch off kind of feel. I read another collection called Variations on the Body by Maria Ospina. And this is a collection of short stories translated uh, from the Spanish from Colombia. Our first story is about this guerrilla fighter who defects and then is working at a Carrefour and just her her stories and her triggers but also super dipped in the mundane because she's just working as a cash register at the supermarket she's sort of flitting back and forth and there was like one part where i think she's like rehearsing her name yeah very strange we have one story about someone who watches a convent from their window and sort of starts stalking this young girl we have another story about a flea infestation and we also have a little girl who starts eating dirt, making dirt drink as a way to just like cope with anxiety. Very 100 years of solitude-esque. <laughs> but this was such a strange little collection, I just really enjoyed it. And then, so I have been looking up, I don't know how I came across her, but Guadalupe Netel. Oh, because she has a book called La Hija Unica, in English it's called Stillborn. 
and it's supposed to be for people who enjoy Elena Ferrante and it's blurbed by Annie Arnaud so I'm I'm really interested in reading that one. I actually have both editions. I think I'm gonna start with the translated version and then maybe slip back into the, the original Spanish. But I realized that she has a bunch of short story collections. So one that I saw was, in Spanish it's called Petals and Other Unsettling Stories. In English it's called Besoal and Other Unsettling Stories. And this has also been very strange and very delightful. <laughs> First story was about a, a photographer who works with a surgeon for your eyelids and he falls in love with one of the patients. Everything is just slightly off. We have another story where a woman again is watching her neighbor through her window and there's this date scene and we see this man sort of do something strange and our watcher sort of react in a strange- I don't want to give it away, but it was just really weird. <laughs> we have another story about this girl who goes with her aunt and uncle to this post and she meets this other little French girl and weird stuff happens with them. So yeah, I'm excited. I have this one and then I also have Natural Histories by her. So I am enjoying- I think she's also super super strange, but I think it's just so cool that this is a tradition. I hadn't really thought about that, but so true in terms of the things I like to read and what I'm drawn to. I think apparently it also has lineage with like Chilean and Venezuelan storytelling, if I'm not mistaken. What did I just read? This was so freaking weird. Okay, so the last story was the titular story, and essentially we're reading this intimate journal entry that was to the therapist or the doctor. This is the part that got me. I was nine years old. Months earlier, my parents had announced their imminent divorce. I mentioned this fact to humor you since I know all too well the importance you grant coincidences like these, although to be frank, it seems like a psychologist's superstition to me. <laughs> the same way painters never walk under ladders and taxi drivers swerve to avoid black cats. I guess each profession has its own. And as soon as I read that, I was like, all right, where are we going with this? <laughs> but essentially, this story was about a woman with uh, trichotillomania, is what I assume, the compulsive pulling of hair who meets a man with a tick where he's constantly cracking his knuckles. They realize that they're the love of each other's lives and although they love each other deeply, they cannot stand each other's ticks to the point where, well, shit happens. And then at the end of the story, it becomes clear that these are not just letters to the therapist. I'll just leave it at that. It just really, I think it escalated. The, the pacing of this is really fantastic. I think some stories happen in more, more finite spaces, whereas some stretch, but not in a way, like, I don't know, I just thought this was so well paced. And essentially, I feel like this story, ow. <laughs> I feel like these stories all explored the small things that we believe make us strange or undesirable and how there is always that one person who will love that about you. So in that first story, we had the oculist's photographer who fell in love with one of the patients who was gonna go and get her eyelids corrected. There was another story about sort of presenting yourself or what you expect people to want to love and then how when you do reveal who you are, that is the thing that is endearing to someone. And then we have the story about the <laughs> she calls him an olfactorist. This guy who would like stake out in public restrooms and found this intoxicating scent and then fell in love with whoever the scent belonged to and then went on a quest to find the woman whose scent it was. And it was very... <laughs> <laughs> very weird and then finally we have this story where two people who have identified the sort of thing that they believe is hard to live with and the last story is interesting because it sort of brings this idea of like we're confronting the thing that we think that other people won't love and it is hard to overcome and i don't know that they overcome it in the story but i think this idea of just like taking these small details about people because i think we all have it i mean not to this level <laughs> but we all have those strange things that uh we're quite insecure about to sort of see these things sought after and almost become subject of obsession in someone else was just so interesting and like quite uplifting but i don't want that to take away from the fact that this was a weird this was eerie as hell i really enjoyed it I'm really excited. So I'm going to pick up Natural Histories. I was actually going to pick up Rock Eaters and then Natural Histories, but I think I'm just going to go straight to Natural Histories because I want I want more. Hey! <laughs> so I know I said I was picking up Natural Histories by Guadalupe Netel, but I started reading it and I think the first story was about like a cockroach and 
not my thing. <laughs> so I switched over and now I'm reading another Sammy Schweppes. I'm reading Mouthful of Birds and I am fully, I'm only up to the second story. I might be talking but <laughs> I really liked it. The first story was so eerie, so strange. My heart, I'm really, I don't like to be stressed. I like to know what's happening unless it's like creative and poetic, the uncertainty, but generally I don't like to be uncertain. So <laughs> this was a story about this man drops his wife off on the side of the road. Essentially she gets abandoned there and then another person come to explains to her that like this is the dropping off point and there's a field of abandoned women and they start heckling felicity that's the character's name and the person who's explaining everything to her there's another car that comes to drop off another person and they sort of plot quickly in order to have the guy abandoned instead of them and then chaos ensues not chaos but just very interesting <laughs> It ends in a really fascinating way, but my heart was racing as I was reading it. Hello. <laughs> quickly, quickly. So I have been reading Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin. It's very interesting because I believe this is one of her earlier collections of short stories. I just got a text. So yeah, so I've been reading that collection and it's a very different from her most recent collection, Seven House seven houses of spirit <laughs> it's been a long day seven empty houses initially i was really enjoying it because it was very overtly strange there's one story where like this dad is going to pick up his daughter at school and i think it's like the first time he's ever done it he sees this butterfly like this stray butterfly and he like pinches it really tight and something happens where like he injures the wing i don't know if it's a dad or like someone who's waiting with the dad but they they injure the wing and then the butterfly sort of falls and it's trying to crawl away they're just like end it so it was either the dad or the little boy that was there stomps on the butterfly the bell rings and all of these butterflies fly out of the school essentially there's like the ship and you're just like okay oh, just killed my kid <laughs> and there was this other story about oh, where this woman and her partner have an unexpected pregnancy and they go to this doctor and they get these routines that they can do in order to rectify the situation it doesn't seem to be like delineated abortion and then eventually she does all these like breathing exercises and it's all of these like reversals that she has to do like all of the gifts that have been given to her have to be taken away in a very specific way and her partner can't show her affection or even talk to her really and then she sort of feels her energy shift and then eventually she just like spits out the little baby <laughs> so those are those are quirky and interesting and then there's they're starting to get a little bit darker where there was one story about like a dead woman and now they're talking about like murdering a dog and i <laughs> it's like sunny out and it's spring and i just don't want to read about that so i think this is this is the end of the road for me at least for now with mouthful of birds i was really curious to read it in spanish because the dialogue it seemed sometimes in translation the translations can become a little stiff and I, I kind of felt that sensation and I really wanted to feel the, the release of it in its original <laughs> tongue. So I asked Ivana for it in Spanish. She might be uh, sending it, but now I don't know if I even want to continue it. I think I just need a break because it's just like all of this buildup and I don't want to be tense. I don't want to be stressed. <laughs> I just want to enjoy spring. But it's so interesting because I feel like the eerie in Samantha's, Samantha's, Samantha's earlier <laughs> collection is a lot more understated. I like the sense of just like something being slightly off. Whereas these stories are just not fantastical, but there is more of otherworldly, like very, very obviously awry. And that's not, again, it's interesting, but it's not as interesting to me. But I did enjoy this little project. <laughs> Comments are open if you have a weird translated short story collection, maybe not from Latin America, maybe from another place and maybe not even translated maybe in the english i would be very eager to hear your recommendation and yeah let me know how you're doing happy spring i don't know when i'm publishing this but it's spring now it's the day after spring so happy spring happy few months till summer happy reading i hope the reading is fruitful and slumps are in the past it's getting close to halfway through the year i hope you've picked up some bangers and yeah See ya.